That's hard to control, huh? Wow. Wow. Delivering a rover to the surface of Mars is no easy task. In earlier Mars missions, some parachutes, rockets, and a glorified airbag got rovers to the surface. Even though it worked, I'm sure all of the bouncing wasn't ideal for the delicate rover inside. The Curiosity and Perseverance rovers use a system that's really interesting, the Sky Crane. The Sky Crane is essentially an aerial crane with multiple rockets for propulsion and control that help to slow the descent of the crane rover system before finally lowering the rover to the surface with a winch. Once the rover is on the surface, the tether is let go, and the Sky Crane flies off for a rapid scheduled disassembly on the surface of Mars miles away. Now, I don't know about you, but that Sky Crane looks like it has a very similar cousin that we can fly down here on Earth. And I'm very interested in how the dangling rover affects the control system and my ability to fly it. So let's build something to test it out. I recently built this quadcopter to test out some of my flight controller code, but we can outfit it with some equipment to run our Sky Crane test. I want to be able to change the length of the Sky Crane tether while flying, so I'll be using this geared motor and a brushed electronic speed controller to act as a winch. I'll attach it to the bottom of the quadcopter and wire it up so I can control it with a switch on my radio. I also built a small rover to test all this with, but turns out it was more difficult than I thought to keep suspended below the quadcopter with all the rotor wake. So instead, we'll just use a rock as the rover mass. But I can still make the quadcopter look a little more like the Sky Crane just for fun. So we're out here with the uh, quadcopter Sky Crane. I'm just going to take it up. I've got the uh, rock rover that will be lowering with the DIY winch and we're just going to see how controllable it is as this uh, as this rock gets lower on the winch and then eventually the uh, string here is just going to run out and uh, we'll drop the rock off and then we'll we'll be a normal quadcopter again so let, let's see how it goes okay I can feel, yeah, I can feel the, the rock on there. It's a little dangly. Let me start to lower it right. Wait. Yeah, all right, here we go. Ready? Right now. And it's lowering. Oh, it's getting harder to control. We got some oscillations. That's no good. That's hard to control, huh? Wow. Wow. It should drop soon. There we go. And we're a normal quadcopter again. Nice. All right, let's plan. Right, so um, as you could see, um, you know, it started out flying pretty well like a standard quadcopter and as as the line got lower the the pendulum got longer You know, uh, it got into this weird oscillation where you know The pendulum would swing one way the quadcopter would swing the other way and then suddenly they were sort of swinging back and forth out of phase And that made it really hard to control. I was trying to keep it in one location over the ground but You know, I was uh, I almost had no control so you know the control system kept the quadcopter in the air, but it's almost like there was another level of of control that was needed in order to keep that rock from swinging so it could have a gentle landing. Uh, as you can see, it kind of just plopped on the ground. Um, not really ideal if you're dealing with a million dollar or billion dollar Mars rover. Now I know exactly what's going on here from a dynamics perspective, so make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for a more detailed explanation. But first, some more footage from flight testing. And wait for it to go. And that's good enough. With that first flight, I totally forgot to put on the little uh, Sky Crane hat, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter, just makes it look cooler. Let's try it again. And lowering now. Whoops, I forgot to reverse the direction. Let me do that really quick. I forgot to reverse the plugs to change the direction of the motor. 
Ah, I'm so dumb. There it is. All right. Taking off. That doesn't sound good. Oh well, let's do it. Okay. And lowering the sky crane now. Okay, I'm trying to keep it in place. Um, yeah, I can't really stop that swinging and it's getting worse the longer it is. Oh God, yeah, that's pretty bad. I can't really stop that. Wow, yeah, that's, there we go. And now it's fine, now it's a regular little quadcopter. So I know quite a bit about what's going on here with the dynamics at play, but I wanted to go fly to show you what happens to a hovering platform like the Mars Sky Crane when you don't account for that dangling rover in the control system. The Sky Crane and the rover are linked between the tension force and the tether. When any small disturbance like a wind gust hits the rover, or the sky crane tries to maneuver to a different location, the rover will start to swing like a pendulum. Now because the sky crane is a flying platform and isn't fixed in space, when the rover swings to the side, the tension force in the tether exerts a side force on the sky crane, causing it to slide to the side. If you aren't accounting for this direct coupling between the two bodies in the controller, it becomes really hard to fly as you just saw. So on top of needing an attitude controller for the sky crane itself, the Skycrane is also computing control outputs for its rockets based on measurements of the angle the tether makes. And this is extremely hard to do. And the Perseverance rover just nailed it. So cheers to NASA and JPL on the successful landing, and I hope you've learned another reason why putting this rover on Mars was a huge challenge for all of the engineers involved. It's not quite as easy as lowering a rock from a quadcopter, which we just saw wasn't even easy in the first place. Wow. Yeah. That's... There we go. And now it's fine. Now it's a regular quadcopter. <laughs>